Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. We are back on the Storm Morning dev server, and it's time to have a look at a new large ship that is coming to the Soviet tech tree in the next major update. It's the Arkhangelsk, and this one has a really interesting story. Um, it's a British ship uh, that was given to the Soviets, uh, basically as a loan uh, while they were waiting to collect their war prizes, and then it was given back and eventually sold for scrap. So this vehicle could technically come into the British tech tree and also the Soviet tech tree at the same time. In the Blue Water tree, you will find the Arkhangelsk after the Novoroshitsk, which is the Conti de Cavour class, and then also the Paraskaya Communa. So the high tiers of the Soviets are basically fake ships that were never finished, and then ships that they've got from other nations, which shouldn't really be too surprising if you know about Soviet shipbuilding. Now, what really sets this thing apart from other vehicles that we've seen in the game. Not really a ton. Um, it's very similar to a lot of the other British ships that are around, and therefore still it should be very good in the game, and should be quite nice to generally see. The major armament that this vehicle has is four sets of dual-mounted 15-inch cannons. It has two on the front, and then two on the back. Then uh, you have a bunch of six-inch guns, uh, which sit about the place, on the sides of the vehicle right here. Um, it has four on either side and kind of a similar amount to like First World War vehicles. It also has four dual mounted four inch cannons. Uh, so you can see two here and then also two on the other side. And it just has a metric ton of AA options too, which will help out the vehicle. There's so many different 20 millimeters just dotted around the place. You can see dual ones here and then single mounts here. There's even ones with just ridiculously small firing arcs like this one, which is sat um, just, I don't even know what it's supposed to shoot. And then of course, next to it, you can see the other part of the AA. This vehicle has the quad two pounders, uh, which are really cool to see. The 40 millimeters and also the octo setup too, which is what this one is. And then, uh, so it should have a lot of 40s, should have a lot of 20s, and also the four inches and the six inches. Uh, I don't think you could ask for more uh, from a secondary point of view. Maybe just a few more HEVT rounds which would be nice. So this isn't just like your standard uh, battleship that doesn't have a ton of weapons on it. This was updated to have a bunch of them uh, since it's the 1944 variant. So uh, what do you get from this? Well, with the 15 inch cannons, you get access to two rounds. First of all, the SAPCBC, uh, which has 487 millimeters of pen, 58.6 kilos of explosive mass, uh, which is good. Then the APC round gets 615 millimeters of pen with 30 kilos of TNT equivalent. So whatever you'll be hitting, you'll at least put a decent dent into it. The 152s, which are the 6-inch guns, you either have the HE or you have the SAP on it, and then the rest of the guns, you're not able to change up. Another thing you might also notice, no torpedoes on this thing, and also not a ton of modifications. Uh, so nothing really special about it. No plane, no torpedoes, you know, no, no smoke or anything like that, or artillery, of course. You just have your standard stuff, and that's it. And... That's pretty much what this machine is. Looking at its fire directors, uh, it has the bog standard one too. 15 seconds calculation time, 8 seconds update time, and this works for all of the larger guns uh, that are around, and it has a million other damn fire directors. So um, generally, if you take out one, you still will have to deal with it. The ammo elevators are fully modeled, and they look absolutely beautiful. Uh, the actual ammo on this thing is under the waterline, so it's going to be quite hard to hit it up. And then it has these sets of engines under the deck, plus transmissions, keeping this thing going, all into a single smoke funnel. And uh, you can see, once again, the beautiful model of these. They, whoever models this stuff does a really lovely job at uh, setting all of this up. It also is the only, or one of the only, machines in uh, or on the War Thunder dev server that's new that actually has its armor fully modeled, which is really nice to see um, on the vehicle. So 330 millimeters on the front of the turrets, then it also has this 330 millimeter belt all along, 152, uh, which is sat here as well, 
plus intricate little pieces of armor to keep this thing alive. Around the uh, bridge, it also has 279 millimeters of armor, so that will hopefully stop some of the incoming damage. And it has even lower armor around the engines and the ammo rooms too, so just to keep it going. Look at all of these little kind of curves that it has, all little pieces modeled on it too. Pretty cool to see. Um, actually from this machine so yeah it's it's ready to go it's raring uh, in the soviet tree and that's generally pretty cool to see now this vehicle also represents something interesting right and it's something that we've kind of talked about previously uh, when it comes to the soviet tech tree and also a few others now with the germans getting a battle cruiser that never really was built you can see the aa fire here by the way uh, from all the 40s and the 20s and all of that stuff. Uh, so, the interesting thing about a machine like this, this was used by the Soviets, this obviously was in service for them, and then sent back to the British. Is this the type of story, or is this the type of history that you prefer, compared to some of the other histories, which are straight up like, well, you know, it was never fully built, so therefore it shouldn't be in the game. Is this something that people are more okay with, or is it just kind of a difference in opinion? Now, I know a lot of people uh, have differences of opinions on whether vehicles should be added, which were in the mock-up stage, or whether they, you know, were built in any way, or all of these, and it's always nice to hear general opinions on it. I think this uh, vehicle and this type of vehicle is the way to do it the best out of it. So if a vehicle was in service, or at least was even looked at by them, uh, this would make sense to add in. Whereas some of the other vehicles, like the Kronstadt and also many others, uh, have a little bit less of a claim to be in the game. Since we know this thing was built, we know this thing was tested, we know it turned up, we know it was able to actually serve the USSR for a while and do pretty well at it. If you do want to learn about this vehicle, I highly recommend it though, since it does have quite a funny and active story. And uh, unfortunately, it wasn't treated very well in the end, but then again, not a lot of these machines were, which uh, kind of makes me sad. Maybe we should have more museum ships, but at the same time, it costs quite a lot to keep going. The main battery of the 15-inch guns will do plenty of damage to the enemies that it will face, and hopefully we can get more of these types of machines, not just for the British tree, but also for other nations that use them. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank GMG Smiley, CD Beans, Chieftain Mike, EMN3 Galaxy, Tulio Pontecovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Ozzy Panzer, Alan Hacker, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Sem, Aslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. For supporting the channel.